welcome to my uh, video truck driver from Cape Town to the Angola border and I hope you're going to enjoy the video and that your uh, computer won't buffer too much this is day one loading at a farm uh, near Grapau uh, about um, 50 or 60 kilometers east of Cape Town the farm is called Noram uh, fruit farms and this load is destined for the Angola border going to narrate uh, the video all in one these are the farm workers which is busy to um, tarp the truck and they always do a brilliant job of tarping once they've covered um, it's hardly necessary to um, make any adjustments um, the fruit will just stay up in position all the way I'm having a cup of coffee while I'm narrating this. <laughs> if you hear some, some funny slurping noises. And um, we're just about ready to go. This is on day one, and uh, this was late afternoon. This is morning of day two, and I've slept at Bittefontein, and this is um, starting up. Okay, this is a quick and log stop. I always um, fill um, in the log book as I go Steinkopf. along. This is my. Uh, this is uh, Steinkopf. The village is called Steinkopf, and it's the last village um, in South Africa on my way to the border post. At Steinkopf I usually just get some refreshments and food and whatever I can still buy in South Africa. This is the last stretch towards the border. I'm just uh, telling there in Afrikaans um, this is the last section to the border and the landscape changes dramatically within um, uh, 60 kilometers uh, the vegetation changed totally from um, Karoo vegetation to, uh, to semi-desert and arid desert uh, landscape in the movie Okay, this is five mile Poort. Um, this is a, a mountain pass, if you could call it that, just before the border. And you can hear the jake brakes of the truck. <laughs> Okay, here we are at the border post and um, I'm just saying there in Afrikaans that um, you really don't want to make a movie there. Um, you don't want to attract attention from customs and the police officers and all the border personnel. Um, so you go through as quietly as possible, especially with the truck. 
at times uh, the truck skews up at the border post you'll be amazed to find um, 20 or 30 trucks in the queue to get through luckily on that day I didn't have a lot of traffic trucking traffic and the processing of the documentation went quite fast Okay, we've crossed the border and this is the southern part of Namibia. I'm just talking about the time there. You can see on the GPS I'm doing 64 k's an hour. And um, I'm just mentioning the desert land. Um, this is within the 60 kilometers that the entire landscape had changed. We're right next to the Orange River at this point and soon you'll, re you'll see the uh, vineyards, table grapes um, on the left hand side and they grow quite green and luscious in the, in the desert region. So if there's water, things will grow. I decided not to put music to this video, These, you want the, the natural sounds um, of the two-way radio, the shortwave radio, the CB radio, the noises of the truck and you don't want to overwhelm that with, um, with other music. I decided just to narrate this over the existing sound, um, not to spoil the um, the effect of this. This is still the village of Noord Uwer. Um, a very small village. And it's actually your first town on the Namibian side. Okay, here we are close to Gruno. And uh, you'll see for the remainder of the trip had some quite some rain. Now, Gruno is a very small place, it's basically only a uh, shell garage and um, a few dwellings and there's not much going on in Gruno. That's a turn off to Karasburg and Uppington, Johannesburg, that's sort of the main intersection of the south. Up on the right is the shell garage. Ah, oh, this is me now. <laughs> I'm listening to shortwave and uh, yeah. hungry what are we eating it's a recipe on the radio I must say they are horrible with the truckers giving all delicious recipes okay the, I've slept just before Ketman's whip this is day three and uh, this is going to be a long haul your second day is mostly with um, border crossings and stuff like that and the third day is really where you push seven o'clock in the morning now s look at me waking up still in bed <laughs> you'd notice I had a, a dry shave <laughs> Oh, 
is een club. Nee, ik wil al nog alles van check bij de kant. I was just saying that I need to check things and so on. That's me talking with the CB buddy. Another trucker. On the left hand side is the village of Ketmanshoop. Let's just have it a big one. Now I can see the southern Africa. Okay. Cape Town to the border. Ketmanshoop. Mariental, that's where we are now. Vintuk, the capital, Ochimarongu, Chumep, up to the and up to the Angola border. Well, it did know for you, huh? That gives you a good idea of. Okay, this is the village of Riobot in Namibia. I'm just listening to a shortwave radio. Um, it is RSG from South Africa. Vintuk, the capital of Namibia. The Western Bypass is just a freeway that runs around Vintuk, so you don't have to go through the town. And um, they prefer the trucks to go on the Western Bypass to alleviate the traffic in town. And uh, there's enough other stopping places and so on along the way, it's smaller villages. Uh, I only Usually I make a stop to refuel in Vintuk, uh, but it's just before the before you, you go on the Western Bypass. This is Ochiwarongu in Namibia and uh, Ochiwarongu is the capital of the Ochiwarongu region in the northern part of Namibia. Okay, this is Chumep. Um, Chumep is the copper capital of Namibia. And um, yeah, this is actually um, in the real time it was getting dark and I drove through the night. And this section that follows now is is in the reverse. I've uh, recorded this on the on the return trip, but to put it into perspective uh, as we go along. Um, this is day three then. Um, although I was ready in uh, in Oshikangu. this is from um, uh, this is at Oshibelo Gate. Um, Oshibelo Gate has a uh, way bridge and um, a traffic control point station and so on, quite full of Nazis there. And um, this is Uvambu land, the northern part of Namibia, uh, in the 1970s and 80s this was a region um, where the Namibian Angola bush war took place and most of the South Africans was deployed there. And, um, 
interesting about Ubambu land is the Makalani palm, these palm trees that you see on the side of the road and uh, the Ubambu people weave baskets, baskets and all sorts of items from the leaves of the Makalani palm. Uh, it's quite an amazing uh, area. Okay, um, this is actually this section I drove during the night. So remember this is going back. I have to keep the video chronological. Uh, so in actual fact, um, this is my afternoon already after I've offloaded uh, in Look at this is from Dangwa filling station, it was rain season and uh, I had to take my shoes off to walk around in the puddles of water and uh, you'll soon see uh, on this section of the video that the truck is empty, it's already offloaded. Yeah, on the pump thing that it is busy to, um, to refuel the truck. A lot of water inside the building. The diesel tanks is on the stacks, so the diesel is on the water. Okay, we are back to real time now. Uh, I'm at my destination, Oshikangu, uh, at the Angola border post. It's about um, 500 meters, 600 meters from that location to the actual border post where you cross through to Angola and as you can see my my cargo arrived very good condition <laughs> client was happy, very good driver okay um, one uh, for uploaded now and um, I'm just uh, driving through the village and show you um, this section here is called uh, China Village. It's uh, two rows of um, all sorts of China shops where you can buy just about anything from motorcycles, DVDs, it doesn't matter, you can buy anything imaginable there.